So, you know, let's, let's pull that apart just a little bit so we can understand that a little bit more clearly. And what we're gonna do this time around is we're gonna make some noise, but we're gonna make some top noise instead. Now we're gonna change its resolution down to something manageable. For example, in this case, I want us to be 200 samples across, right? This is our X dimension. And in our Y dimension, I just want us to be one. Okay, I'm gonna use the same top two. I'm gonna go ahead and plug us into a null because that will help an awful lot. I'm gonna use this null over here in our top two. Now we've got a bunch of things we've got to change here. So I actually want next frame. This will be faster for us in the long run. Uh, in our crop, I want to go ahead and get my full image, right? So R0, G0, B0, A0. I'm not going to worry about what A represents so far. So we'll just have RGB. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to go ahead back to my noise. Or excuse me. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, this is fine. We're good, we're good. Well, uh, you'll see. We'll change this in one more second. We'll kind of scoot this over here a little bit. We'll move it down here towards the bottom. So we'll be able to see some of this in action. We're going to go ahead and we're going to use a rename, right? So we're going to rename our, our values of RGB to be instead T X, Y, Z. And we are then going to plug this right here up into our null. Ugh, well, what gives? Well, part of what gives here for us is the fact that our noise is only monochrome. So let's switch off this monochrome tab. Now we've got some beautiful color noise. Now we changed our top two to next frame to keep things going fast for us. So we're going to have to do a little pulse reset to get that to populate again. Okay, that's pretty slick like that an awful lot. But we can see that we're actually still bound in a coordinate space that's zero to one because our pixels are normalized zero to one. So we need to do some math, right? So we might do this, we might insert a math operator. And in our math, our range of zero to one is now gonna be expressed as negative two to two. That might be too much, maybe just negative one to one. Nice. Now let's come over here and animate our noise because we'll see an interesting thing happen here. So we'll animate this in Z abs times dot seconds. That's going real fast, right? So let's slow that down, 0.01. So we're going to multiply that against. And this is good, but we can see that there's some kind of like herky jerky movements in here. And part of where that herky jerkiness is coming from uh, is related to the sample rate or the, excuse me, not the sample rate, but the bit depth of our pixels. So we only have a kind of set number of decimal points that represent our color. And in that case, in this case, that's also representative of our position. So if we want kind of smoother interpolated movement, we just need to make sure that we've got a greater range in terms of our bit depth. So with 16 uh, floating points instead of eight floating points, we're gonna get a much more rich kind of set of movement here. Okay. So, you know, this is pretty good. We might be able to crank that up to like 500. Oh yeah, that's much better. I like that, that's good. And you might say to me, you know, I'd really love to have some color back in here. All right, so in this case, we might think of single rows, right, as being for single attributes. So this thing that's one pixel tall, the first stack is all going to be information that's related to our uh, position in space. Now we might make the second stack, right? We're going to change this to be two pixels tall. We might want that second uh, stack to be representative, representative, excuse me, of our color. Now we've got to do a little bit of kind of futzing over here. We can see that we've got R0 right? So we need to make sure that we're, in this case, star zero is going to get turned into TX, TY, TZ. Star one is going to get turned into RGB. I think that'll work. 
slick. We're going to need another map. And we're probably going to need to do something like this. We're going to scooch this over a little bit. We're going to need to insert a select, right? And in this case, we're going to go ahead and select out just our T, X, Y, Z values. So those are representative of what's going on there in our positional space. R, G, B, R, G, B. We're going to grab those to be our pixels, or to be our color, rather. And in this case, right, we're kind of lucky here because these are already normalized, so we can get rid of this map. We don't need that. We are going to need a merge to put this all back together. So we'll plug in our translation and our color information here. We can plug this in right here for right now. Ooh, it's looking pretty sassy. Let's scoot this down a little bit more. We can go ahead and think about, well, maybe we want more instances. Maybe I want like a thousand instances. Right, we're still running here at 60 frames a second. We're not breaking a sweat yet. What about 4,000? That's still pretty easy. What about 10,000? Still easy as pie. So where we were you know, struggling to kind of keep up with that in our channel, in our kind of just raw chops, when we're thinking about doing it here on the GPU, it's really easy to kind of do that kind of fast. Right, so we might actually add another row. We're going to make this three tall now. And you guessed it. So now that star two is going to turn into R, X, Y, Z. So now we're going to get some rotation information that we can pull out here. So we're going to do the same business. We're going to go ahead and borrow this thing we've already made. Scoot that up. And the channel names are going to be R, X, Y, Z. Those are the only ones we want to change. And 0 to 1 is going to be representative of 0, 360 to 360. Great. And we can plug that right in. Right. So we've got some wonderful rotation information there also. Now, it's you know, kind of a shame to think of just doing scales. Uh, well, you know what? Why not? Let's do scale. Let's add another row to this thing. We'll rename star 3 is going to be S, X, Y, Z. And in this case, what we're going to end up this time around is we're going to end up with an ability to scale these in different dimensions. So 0 to 1. Uh, what did we use before? Let's take a look at what we did for scale. Scale was in a space of not 0.5 to 2.5. So not 0.5 to 2.5. And because this is separate now, we just have to make one change up here in our geo, back to our instance page. In this case, SX, because that's how it's scaled in X, how it's scaled in Y, how it's scaled in Z. These are all now different. <laughs> And we can see this has got a very kind of soupy, kind of squishy quality to it that it didn't have before. Let's push a little bit harder on what those scales represent, and we'll see that a little bit more clearly represented. Right, if we go 1 to 10, we can see that there is kind of some more squishy space in these multiple dimensions. Now, we're still pretty tight here. So we might think about in our space scaling, we might crank that up, maybe negative three to three. Oh, we could go even bigger, negative 10 to 10, I bet. Yeah, sassy. And we could take our camera and scoot our camera back a little bit further, right? So, you know, this gives you a way to kind of think about how you do these uh, instance operations, both in Chopland, um, which is very efficient, can be very exciting, as well as how you might do it um, thinking like a GPU and how you can kind of embed lots of information into a single pixel uh, and you can extract that to similarly kind of do some uh, interesting transformation work. You know, fun fact, something for you to think about and hold on to in your mind, right, is that with a little bit of work you could figure out what an animation would look like, save it as a movie, and then play that movie back, right? That's not a crazy thing to think about. Uh, and that would be a very efficient way to kind of hold on to a bunch of information. 
Anyway, I hope that gets you started. It uh, gives you kind of some inspirational things to think about, some inspirational ways to kind of push and explore, and happy programming.